Let's start with how to use two apps at one time. First, I'm gonna open up YouTube. I'm gonna close it out. Then I'm gonna open up Google Chrome, close it out. Then I'm gonna swipe up on the home screen, swipe over to the YouTube icon, tap on the icon and tap split screen. From there, I can select Google Chrome. And now I can actually have a YouTube video playing while I'm browsing the internet. Now I have a video playing at the top and at the bottom here, I can go on Google Chrome and go on ESPN. I can browse my scores while listening and watching the video. Now this is also supported in the landscape position. Now as I rotate the phone, you're gonna notice in the bottom left corner, there's a little icon that you tap that will rotate the screen for you. And then I can still browse through my ESPN while I'm watching my YouTube video. When you're all done, take your finger, put it on that white line in the middle and just drag it to the right. And that will take you out of split screen. That's how you use two apps at one time. All right, next, let's talk about how to get rid of that pesky gesture mode. Now, what is gesture mode? Well, you know how there is no traditional home button at the bottom anymore. You have to swipe up and hold. If you're not a fan of the gestures and you want your traditional Android buttons back, here's what you do. We're gonna go to the settings. Now I have the settings wheel on the home screen. If yours is not on the home screen, no problem. Simply swipe down from the top of the screen, swipe down again, and tap on the settings wheel in the bottom right corner. From here, you're gonna go up all the way to system. From here, you're gonna go to gestures. From here, you're gonna go to navigation mode, and you're gonna switch to three button navigation. This will bring back the traditional Android buttons and make it easier for you to navigate the phone home, back button, and your recent apps button. And obviously swiping up to close out apps. All right, now make sure as you come across a feature that you like, make sure you bump that like button down below. And at the end of the video, I want you to drop in the comment section what were your favorite tips that I shared. All right, let's move on. Now, how do we get this screen to stay on longer without having to constantly touch the screen? Well, let's go back to our settings. We're gonna go to display, which is here. We're gonna go to screen timeout, and we're gonna increase this from 30 seconds to two minutes. And also we're gonna turn on screen attention, which prevents your screen from turning off if you're looking at the screen. So it's, it's gauging if you're looking at the screen and it will keep the screen on longer. This cuts down on annoyance and it makes it easier for you to just keep the screen on longer. All right, next, I wanna show you a new fun feature that just came to Pixel devices, and this is how to use AI to design your own wallpaper. Let's hold down the home screen. We're gonna tap on wallpaper and style. From here, swipe up, go to more wallpapers, and then tap on AI wallpaper. And here, we can first select a theme. So I'm going to pick terrain, and then you're gonna have these keywords. All the words underlined are the keywords that you can change. So I'm gonna change this from surreal to realistic, and from cliffs to beach, and from the shades to blue, and hit create wallpaper. And in just a few seconds, it will create a brand new wallpaper. In fact, it'll create four different versions for you to look at. And if you don't like those, you can always cycle through and pick more. So this is the first one, second, or I really like that one. I'm gonna check that one. And, but be careful if you press it, then it's going to start asking you more questions. Third and fourth. So if, guess what? I like this one, I wanna make it my wallpaper. I'm gonna hit the check in the upper right corner and I can now lock it in as a wallpaper. I'm gonna hit set wallpaper, home screen and lock screen, and now hit the home button. And now I have a brand new wallpaper created with AI. So super cool. I like to change my wallpaper every couple of days just to make the phone feel fun and different. So 
Moving on, let's talk about how to launch your camera from any screen, even if your phone is off. Never miss an important moment simply by tapping the power button two times, just like this. This will automatically turn on the camera and you can then start recording. This will even work if you have a lock code on the phone. Um, this will bypass that and take you right to the camera. It'll let you take pictures, but it won't let you get into the phone. You'll still have to put in your code to unlock the phone. So even right now, now I have to either use my fingerprint or put in my code to get to the phone. But that is called the quick launch camera feature. So uh, no matter what you're doing, double tap on the power button and that will take you to the camera so you can take pictures. For the next feature, let's go to the settings and let's back out and we're gonna go all the way up to system once again, go to gestures. We're gonna turn on quick tap to start actions. And here we have a list of some commands that we can trigger. For example, take a screenshot, access the digital assistant, show notifications. The flashlight one is my favorite because it's just really simple. Um, you're walking in the house, you know, your lights are dark, you need to see some light. Hey, I, my phone is in my hand already. I'm just gonna double tap the back of the phone just like this and the flashlight is gonna come on. So that's my favorite use for that, but you can have it do a lot of other things too. Another way to use this is go to open app, hit settings, and you can go in and have it launch a specific app for you. So you might want it to launch TikTok for you. Now I'm holding the phone. Hey, I wanna to go to TikTok, double tap and now it launches the TikTok app. So super cool there. Love that feature. Definitely make sure you get that set up ASAP. Next, let's talk about the emergency SOS mode, how to trigger it and how to set it up to basically trigger messages to your loved ones in the event of you being in an emergency. You're gonna press the power button five times really fast, just like this. One, two, three, four, five. It's gonna take you to the emergency SOS mode. And from here, to officially kick it into gear, you need to hold in the center for three seconds. Now, right now, by default, if you don't set up anything, it'll simply call 911. But if we go, if we go to the settings, we can program it to trigger a phone call to a loved one. It'll also send them a message and with some additional information. So to set this up, you're gonna go to your settings, safety and emergency. And the main ones I'll tell you to start with are uh, emergency contacts. So here you will need to just sign your Google account, which you should already be signed into. Now you're going to tap add contact and you'll want to add uh, whoever your important emergency contacts are, whether it be a parent, a sister, a brother, a spouse, whatever. A part of what this will do is it's going to list these contacts on the home screen of your phone if you've triggered the emergency SOS feature. And here it says so people can view and call them in the event of an emergency, but they can't unlock the phone. So let's say you've passed out because you um, have had just a medical emergency, but you triggered it, someone finds you on your phone, it will show these contacts and allow the person to call them to let them know you're in trouble. That's the first thing. The next thing is plug in your medical information so that if a medical personnel found you, they would have all your important information listed on the home screen of your phone. Allergies, pregnancy status, medications, home address, medical notes, organ donor notes, etc. All these things will be displayed on the home screen. So if someone finds you unconscious, they will know how to care for you properly. Now next, let's go to the emergency SOS section so you can get a little more information about what happens when we hit that power button five times. So like I said before, it will trigger a call to the emergency services. And once you've logged in some emergency contacts, it will share information with those contacts. And I believe it will share your location. And I believe it takes a, it takes a video recording um, of the surrounding of where you are and what's happening. So let's say you're about to faint, 
you can trigger this mode. It's going to start recording and you could record a message saying, hey, help, I'm in trouble or help, I'm going to faint, help, I didn't have my medicine, whatever it is. And it will send that message to your emergency contacts. So that's why you want to make sure you plug in those emergency contacts because they're gonna get that alert when you trigger this feature. So those are the main things you wanna set up so that if an emergency does happen, you are ready to basically share it with friends or family and let them know how to care for you and where you are, and also to have all your information displayed properly so that medical personnel can take care of you properly. Now, if you found this helpful so far, make sure you bump that like button down below. I know I've gone over something that was either new information for you or you thought was pretty cool. So make sure you show some love with that like button. I also want to give a quick plug to this really cool um, device here, which does a couple of cool things. So one, this thing is a fan. I get really hot when I'm recording my videos. And so I have this little desk fan that I just set up and in between videos, I have this fan going so that I stay cool, which is great. And it has two settings. Now, aside from that, let's say your phone battery is low and you need a quick charge. This actually has a full size USB that you can simply plug in to any device. So right here, I'm plugged up, plug into my Pixel and just that easy, I have some backup juice here. This has a, uh, a built-in battery so I can charge my USB devices. It also has a flashlight as well. Now, most of you already are gonna set your phone up so when you double tap, it's gonna launch your flashlight, but in the event you choose not to, you have this cool backup flashlight as well. So anyway, I'll drop a link for this in the description in case you guys are interested in picking up one. It's super cool and I use this thing all day just to stay cool while I'm shooting videos. Next, let's go over another key feature for what could be an emergency moment or, hey, just uh, my battery's low and I don't know when I'm gonna charge again and I have to make sure my phone stays on. Well, you would do this. Swipe down from the top of the screen, swipe down again. You will then swipe to the left and you'll find the battery saver mode. Now, this normally will come on when your phone drops to about 15%, but, if you hold, if you long press on battery saver, it'll take you to the menu and you can switch between your standard battery saving mode, which simply just will turn off some background functions to help stretch battery life. You can switch this to extreme battery saver mode. Now, when you're in the extreme mode, it will strip down the phone to the most important features that you need to have on and this way, it'll allow your battery to stretch much longer. So I wanna show you a quick demonstration of this. I'm gonna turn it on right now. I'm gonna hit the home button. And as you'll notice, um, some of my apps are gonna be grayed out because it's only gonna give you access to the most important apps that you need to have access to. And this is how it's gonna stretch your battery. Now, as we swipe down from the top of the screen and we swipe down again, it'll show you the battery life of the phone right now. And it says in this current state, your phone could last up to two days and 17 hours. Now, granted, if you start using the phone a lot or you take it out of this setting, it's not gonna last two days, you know, 17 hours, right? So this is, if you were to switch to this mode, it's gonna give you a lot more battery life, but you can't just do random stuff on the phone. This is, hey, I'm in an earthquake, I'm stuck here, I don't know when I'm gonna be free, let me turn on this mode so that my battery is gonna last me longer and hopefully give me a chance to, for someone to find me. I can still send text messages, I can still make calls, right? I can still access a few other features in the settings. So um, you'll notice quite a few of the apps are gonna be grayed out, but not all of the apps. You'll still have access to some of them. You can also make modifications to what apps are grayed out uh, in the settings as well. So to turn this off, you're gonna swipe down from the top of the screen, swipe down again, swipe to your left, go back to battery saver, long press, and you're gonna turn it off and um, switch it back to just the standard battery saver. That's how you turn it off. Now. If you go to Extreme Battery Saver and hit the settings wheel, this is where you can customize what apps 
you deem as essential and what apps are not essential. So for example, the Play Store is probably not really an essential app, doesn't need to be there. But you might say, hey, I want Google Chrome to be there because if I have internet, I want to be able to search and maybe get some news about what's going on. Or you might say you want one of your social media apps on there because you want to see if anyone has posted something. I would recommend having an X um, as one of your essential apps because when things happen, people tend to post on there very quickly. Uh, apps like like Twitter or excuse me, apps like TikTok and Instagram are going to use a lot of battery life. So I wouldn't necessarily have those available. So just keep that in mind. OK, so that is the battery saver or the extreme battery saver mode. That's going to give you a lot more battery life, especially in the event of an emergency or. Hey, I just forgot a charger. I'm going to be out all day. I want to make sure my phone lasts as long as it can. I'm going to switch to that more aggressive mode as well. OK, this next feature is not going to be popular for everyone, but for you professionals out there who are trying to get more work done, but your phone can be a distraction, you're going to love this feature. Swipe down from the top of the screen, swipe down again, swipe to your left, swipe to your left and go to focus mode. Now, focus mode is a feature that will basically turn off your notifications. In fact, let's go into it now. Let's long press on focus mode. This is where you can really optimize the features to set it up to work for you the most. So I just have it set up right now that these are my three most distracting apps, Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube. So these apps are going to be grayed out. I cannot open them while I'm in focus mode because I want to get work done, right? And you can go through and you can add more apps to this list. Hey, for some of you guys, Amazon is one of those apps, right? Um, so you want to go through and strip down any app that would be deemed a distraction and it will gray it out during the time you have set as focus time. Now you can manually turn this on or you can set a schedule and you can have this automatically come on, for example, during work hours, maybe nine to five or maybe have it come on and then go off during lunch, you know, different things like that. It says when you need time to focus, you can pause distracting apps and hide their notifications. So guess what? People are sending you Instagram messages or TikToks. All that is not going to come through while you're in the focus mode. So keep this on. We need to get work done. There's also a take a break mode where you can for five minutes, have access to those distracting apps, 5, 15 or 30. And when that time goes off, then those apps are going to go to be blocked out once again. So that is the focus mode. And for our last tip, let's talk about the recorder app and how you can basically use this recorder app to not only record voice memos, but also to create a transcript of any conversation. If you're talking to someone or you're simply sitting in a meeting, you're in a class and you just want to record the notes, you can turn this on, hit record, and it will begin to transcribe the entire conversation. The other cool thing is that it will separate voices. So right now uh, I'm the only person talking, so it's just one long transcript. But now if it's multiple people talking, it's actually going to separate the speakers. So you can see here, you got this speaker here, you got this speaker here. So it actually will separate the voices of the different people who are talking. So excuse my silly voice. Um, but anyway, that's one of the cool things about this. It will take uh, all the notes of the meeting. It will separate the speakers. And now you have an audio recording and a visual transcript to go off of to uh, see all your meeting details. All right, so super cool feature, it's super underrated. A lot of people don't talk about it. Uh, I wanna give a quick plug to my TikTok. First of all, thank you for everyone who's still watching. If you want more tips and tricks and hidden features, I post a new one every week on TikTok. You can follow me there at HT Tech Video. So definitely make sure you follow me on there. And do me a favor, leave me a comment down below and let me know what tip was your favorite or if there's one that you already knew about that you use a lot, hey, let me know in the comment section as well. Love to hear your feedback and know what tips are resonating the most with you guys so I can use that for new videos that are coming. If you haven't already done so, bump that like button down below. If you're not already a subscriber, hit that subscribe button and stay tuned for more videos. 
Take care. And as always, have a good one.